your pops cold up. You won't be the only one to cross over. Got some for a scrap motion. Gonna elevate him even more, cause I got the final boss glow up. Got like I'm on that Oscar, bro. What's going on, DSG? It's your boy Donna Bradley back at y'all another video. Today we are over here on M Enterprises channel. The problem with black DC heroes. Now I don't know what I'm in store for. You know what I'm saying? And generally, I see a title like this. I'm like, alright, we're just gonna move that way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I'm taking a leap here. This just popped up on my shit. And I was like, okay, let's see. I wanna see uh what what's going on here you know what i'm saying because i feel like when it comes to this this thing i know like race swapping is a app that people have had their issues with that and uh, things like that as far as characters but it, it looks like what's going on here is is characters that are originally black you know what i'm saying so i want to see tell me what the problem is then you feel me so be sure to like be sure to subscribe follow me on all that dead social media we can hear that ain't further down three two one click there are plenty of well-made fleshed out black dc characters to go around many okay, of which so have been we start off with compliments through various mediums that are well beloved by dc fans to this day a lot of y'all probably grew up with john stewart as green lantern thanks yeah. to the dcau or maybe yeah. peeped at the static shark cartoon as a kid but yeah. ain't it funny in modern times how these companies are all like yeah we really want to push for diversity and inclusion with our stories but they have like an entire catalog of characters that could fit that description that they don't even bother to use. Now, I'm not saying the higher ups on Wonder Brothers are racist or anything. But I mean, you look at the DCEU and the whole Justice League fiasco. Many things got cut when Joss Whedon came on board with extensive reshoots. Cyborg's entire character arc got cut, along with scenes with his father Silas Stone. So did any scenes with Iris West, any scenes with the Martian Manhunter actor. WB wouldn't even let Zack Snyder use John Stewart Green Lantern as a cameo. You don't find that suspicious? Okay. All right. So my man's just talking. He got things to say. You know what I'm saying? These are definitely things to think about. Like, I, I feel like I'm getting educated right now. I didn't even know that. You know what I'm saying? My man talking different than what I thought was going to, the, the tip I thought he was going to be on. I ain't even going to hold you. But I didn't know all that, bro. And as you know, the DCEU went to shit. <laughs> so, I mean, like, if that's the route that they wanted to take, obviously they're seeing the fruits of that labor. So, like, it seems like that problem took care of itself. But, yeah, nah, definitely something to think about for real. All right, let's go. WB wouldn't even let Zack Snyder use Jon Stewart Green Lantern as a cameo. You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? The okay, but in all seriousness, sorry, there definitely is, is a problem in the lack of pushing these characters to the general public to the point where average folk can't even name characters. Okay, so yeah, the problem of pushing them to the public. Okay, see, I just see he flipped it with the title. See, he got you with the title, came in here, flipped it. Okay, all right, come on. A lack of pushing these characters to the general public to the point where average folk can't even name characters off the top of their head who don't meet a certain criteria. You ever see those videos where people are asked to name like five or so black superheroes who don't have lightning based abilities? Ooh. Can you name five black comic book characters that don't have lightning powers? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm about to say Storm. I'm about to say Storm. Yeah, black I'm Panther. Yeah. Luke Cage. No, he has, he has the, well, he hasn't uh, said. Uh, he hasn't said the five Green black characters in fiction that don't have lightning abilities. Miles, Mor he has lightning. <laughs> we got. Okay, I'm sorry. The Miles that doesn't have lightning abilities. That's not his primary function. You know what I'm saying? This is, but I, 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 I take it. I take it. I think it said Killer B though. Killer B, five black characters without lightning, and you said Killer B. I'd have taken Miles Morales over Killer B. <laughs> Are you kidding me? But all right, let's go. Fiction in general. I don't know why this is so hard on camera. The popular uh, question yeah, to yeah. ask is if DC even acknowledges characters who aren't Batman, but the question we really need to be asking is I just want to know where my niggas at. I'd imagine a select few of internet folk out there would complain about my content being quote unquote too negative. Bro, you're always hating on DC. Stop complaining all the time. I don't give a fuck, man. I'm sick of you always thinking you know what's best for me, dog. I always find it hysterical <laughs> when internet niggas moan about the style of content of a person they themselves choose to watch. Not That's sure crazy. how pointing is, out characters that are. That is very, very mad interesting, bro. Like, uh, because it's because me, be, me being here in this reaction, I was playing with fire because. 
like generally the shit that I react to, I like music, all that stuff. I, I have positive reactions about it. You know, y'all don't really ever see a bunch of negative reactions on my channel. That's not because I haven't had any negative reactions. That's because I never finish the video. Why would I sit in this motherfucking chair and watch an entire video that I know I'm not going to like? Y'all just don't see those reactions because I cut this shit off and I tried to find something that I actually wanted to watch. Like, these motherfuckers that really be posting shit on their channel and they be reacting shit, oh, this dude, oh, I don't like this, or I don't know. I'm like, then why are you seriously just sitting there recording yourself hate shit? You know what I'm saying? That is the weirdest thing I have ever seen. Like, I think I, there was once, maybe two times at the beginning of my channel, I had reacted to some shit I didn't like. It was a rap battle. I think it was like Tails and Sonic or some shit. I hated it, and I cut I cut the reaction off before the song was even over, and I uploaded the reaction, like, and I was trashing this thing, and, like, looking back at the reaction, I was like, I don't like it, but I also don't like trashing niggas like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, this is bad. They knew it was bad when they made it. They don't need my input on this shit, you know what I'm saying? I said never again, bro. If I really just watch something that for whatever, or the music, video, whatever, whatever, and it's just for real booty cheeks, y'all will never see that reaction, bro. I didn't even make through the video. Cut it off. Found something I like to watch. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing a dumb shit. Let's go. <laughs> Neglected or mistreated by a company is considered hating on said character, but okay. You know, I I've always hated Superman. You know what I'm saying? It's not like these videos are literally in defense of said character being the topic of discussion. And if it bothers you that much, unsub, dislike, click the don't recommend channel option on your homepage, whatever makes you feel comfortable. It'd be one thing this if- This nigga channel's all ass backwards, bro. <laughs> 95% of my content is just me going, <laughs> oh my god, dude, like, these modern superhero movies have gone woke, dude. Like, anytime I watch a movie, there's just too many black people on my screen. And if you still perceive yeah, them me Yeah, them niggas go crazy, bruh. I've seen a few of those ones. <laughs> negative instead of a guy just keeping it real. I don't give a shit. He's fine. <laughs> you know we got some problems when you got folk out here thinking Black Lightning and Static are the same character. Or some people not even recognizing Static is associated with DC. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Why the fuck was Superman there? Is that- wait, is Static Shock part of DC? Mm, mm. Mm -mm. That's- that's crazy. I remember a long time ago, it was announced they were working on a Static Shock movie produced by Michael B. Jordan, but in typical WBDCEU fashion, the project went absolutely nowhere with no significant updates announced since. I don't think they've ever even officially canceled it. There has just been no info on it. The script oh that Randy McKinnon is writing for the live action feature film version of Static is, you know, he's hard at work right now. We're going to be getting that soon. So live action Static Shock is a real thing that's in the works. You know, Warner Brothers. I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all. That shit ain't even hit my radar. I ain't never heard nothing about that. So now that he's now that I know this shit was a thing a few years. Yo, WB, bruh. What's happening? What's happening, fam? You know what I'm saying? I watched all the DC movies, you know what I'm saying? And even I I, I watched the, the Aquaman one after it came out on and after it came out on streaming, you know what I'm saying? Once the con once I knew the continuity was shot to shit. <laughs> and there wasn't shit going on. I, I lost interest. I ain't gonna hold you. But hey, yeah, questions, man. Questions. Excited about it. We're excited about it. Michael B. Jordan's excited about it. Uh, Michael B. Jordan's uh, producing the so movie cool. with us. So that was a fucking lie. Whenever a DC <laughs> animated movie is announced, it's always set to release within the same year or the following year of its initial announcement. I don't mm -hmm. recall many or if at all any DC animated films where the film didn't release not too long after. Yeah, DC animated go crazy. I ain't gonna hold you. It was revealed. Well, that is if I don't count the announcement of the Milestone animated movie. Right after they had reconfirmed the existence of a live action static movie, they announced for the first time at DC Fandom 2021, they were gonna make an animated Milestone movie featuring the heavy hitters of the Milestone universe, which included Static. Here's the new announcement uh, that no one knows yet. This is fandom breaking news, which is uh, the first Milestone animated feature film is now in the works. You know, now, we I'm not like I'm not a crazy comic fan. Like I don't know know everything. So when I hear Milestone, I obviously know it's the way it's portrayed to me, like Static and his crew, whatever, whatever. But I didn't know nothing about that group uh, coming up. I got into comics through the first Iron Man uh, movie. Well, seeing that as a kid and do da 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 
And uh, then from there, I started like branching out and finding out more stuff. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then you know DC hopped on, and I'll look up online on things. So like I don't know everything, but I know what I know type deal. All right, we here. Let's go. You just hired an amazing writer. Uh, and if you guys have been reading Hardware, you know how dope he is as a writer. Brandon Thomas. Brandon Thomas. Has been hired to write our screenplay for our animated feature. And uh, in conjunction with Warner Brothers. And um, we're very excited about that. That's going to be a massive project. Massive. With more than one character. That was almost three years ago. And there has not been a single update on this movie since. I'm not even kidding. This is honestly one of the rare occasions <coughs> where I've seen an announcement of a DC animated. Hold on, I'm looking at some of these though. I'm digging. I'm digging the corn rolls with braids to the side. I ain't even. I ain't even bad. Or is that corn rolls or just uh, pull back thread? I don't know. He got some Dragon Ball Z sh going on down here. But alright, let's go. Made a project, and to my knowledge, with no progress being made, it might be unfair to make assumptions. But if there was any progress made on this movie, it probably would have came out at least a couple years ago. Man, thinking back on it, that whole DC fandom event was just a bunch of empty promises. Now, what you're gonna see here is why the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. Clownstone Comics was created by Dwayne McDuffie, Dennis Cowan, and Michael Davis in the 90s to combat racial stereotypes and a lack of diversity seen in comics. This new initiative spawned the creation of characters like Static, Hardware, Icon, Rocket. They eventually approached and reached a deal with DC Comics where they would publish and distribute Milestone books, but the creatives at Milestone still had full creative control of their stories. Unfortunately, Milestone Media was shut down in the late 90s due to struggling to maintain strong sales numbers, along with some pushback from retailers on the more mature stories that were told in Milestone comics, and the comic industry as a whole during that time period had a major downturn, but some of those characters were able to live on in a couple adaptations, more notably the Static Shock cartoon in the early 2000s. Yo, yeah, yo, we yo. was on that. I was on that. Like, that's before I knew anything really about DC or Marvel. I just liked these superheroes. And yeah, like, Static was definitely uh, something I was watching back then. In 2008, it was announced that the Milestone universe and its characters would merge into the main DC Comics continuity, so you'd see Static be a member of the Teen Titans for a little bit. He also got a short-lived solo series during the launch of the New 52 in 2011. In 2020, DC announced the return of Milestone Media with a renewed partnership aiming at bringing Milestone's iconic characters back to the forefront. So you have right. new modern comic titles on Static, Icon and Rocket, Hardware. Characters like Icon and Rocket were seen in Young Justice. You'd never really see Icon too much, but there were was a little bit of screen time given a rocket here and there. I nominate Icon for League membership. Because you suspect Icon might be Kryptonian like you did with Captain Marvel? Icon interests me also. <laughs> As does his protege, Rocket. You know, I was the one who convinced the Icon to become a hero in the first place. I should be outside celebrating with him, not hidden away in here. Static was another character who appeared in Young Justice, first appearing in Season 2. You'd think he'd have more of a role or a purpose or else why even bring him into the show at all, but nope. You don't see him become a team player until like the second half of Season 3, where he's just delegated to being the guy on the team who can't get a girlfriend. Oh, I gotta get a girlfriend. <laughs> we got you good! <laughs> Gotta get a girlfriend. Oh, are you? Oh, come on! I've gotta get a girlfriend. Those hero boys I are pretty that. cool, man. Mm, and not just cool, hot. Yeah, I'm a friend of theirs. Sure you are. Disrespect. You gotta get a girlfriend. Look how they mask with my boy. A lot more screen time was given to Black Lightning in Young Justice Outsiders, where you see some of his guilt as a hero in the beginning. And there was a lot of potential to see cool elements with his character, but I feel like there was just way too much time spent on his relationship with that one doctor before she ends up betraying him and the rest of the team. Then at the end, he becomes a leader-like figure of the Justice League. Now, no- I'll be um, real quick, as far as the DC animated Ooh, stuff, I know that problem, like right now we're on the crisis of Infinite Earths, but I would really like for them to get back to the continuity of this this one this was this one but all right let's go but the show was called young justice i thought this was supposed to give emphasis on the, the younger young, generation of you heroes and fleshing out their characters or at least the heroes who were the forefront in season one it would have been nice to see black lightning take on a mentorship well, yeah, I remember role. they took a big ass hiatus too right like i don't know i forget between what season but i thought they should they just stopped making this shit and then all of a sudden i'm looking through shit and i'm like there's more okay <laughs> like with Static, which was slightly teased in season two. I'm not surprised. 
You show real potential for this gig. You ever need a mentor, Virgil? You just let me know. Now, Kerry Payton is a phenomenal voice actor. Not only is he the voice of Cyborg in the Teen Titans cartoon, but also the voice of Aqualad and like nearly every other <laughs> black character in the show. There's also the Black right. Lightning TV series on the CW, but there's your first problem right there. It's on the CW. I like the idea of the show putting emphasis on Jefferson and his family with both I, his You know what? I, I, was, I was heavy into the CW stuff. I was watching it. Arrow. Um, uh, wow. Arrow. Flash. And I even started, I, I was even watching Black Lightning for a minute, but, like, I couldn't, I just, well, I couldn't, like, Supergirl, I just, I just was vividly uninterested in. Um, I know they, they're they doing this, this Batman thing from that universe as well that I, I just, I kind of, I kind of just fell off to CW shit. I ain't even gonna hold you, man. Let's go daughters getting abilities and whatnot on the flip side it came to the point where a lot of the major focus wouldn't be on jefferson pierce himself my god his wife or former wife lynn would get on my last nerve so would his daughter jennifer but i will say the villain tobias wales uncle ruckus type energy anytime he was on screen was genuinely the funniest thing ever you know they go stand sit your weak monkey ass down all the people of freedom learned that the pierce family is the chocolate covered incredibles and I have to wonder why I haven't seen your blistering black ass playing dress up lately. You big lip bug eyed nappy headed Nimrod. That black son of a bitch keeps rising from the dead. How is it you never seem to age? I keep saying black folks gotta get off of that fried chicken and watermelon Kool Aid diet. Plus, I do my best to stay out of the sun. The character was known to be oh a prominent God, team player yeah. in Batman's <laughs> team of outsiders in the crazy. comics a few times, gaining a lot of respect from Batman himself as he strives to be a symbol of hope, demonstrating effective leadership qualities and a collaborative approach to teamwork in the field. He has a lot of potential with his abilities, often holding back when attacking enemies, with his raw power also being something deemed noteworthy and pointed out by Batman since he has a lot of respect for Jefferson, despite the fact that Jefferson often disagrees with Batman's methods from time to time. If I'm gonna keep it a buck, when it comes to- I think it's crazy honestly just within the dcu uh, or dc period how many people disagree with batman's methods but you also see like batman be disagreeing with like <laughs> motherfuckers that consider themselves good guys but will still kill people you know what i'm saying he's like no that's not the way we can't go that far we can't cross this line and everybody else looking at him like you'll cross every single other line but though <laughs> he's like he's but <laughs> comes to the core roster of the Justice League, I never cared too much about Cyborg being a part of the main cast or a founding member. He's always mm -hmm. been to me much better handled with the Teen Titans or Titans oh cast as the dynamic. Oh God, I agree with that too. I agree. I, I've always liked him with Teen Titans. That might be just because I was introduced, man, uh, through the Teen Titans and the Justice League had always just been these niggas. You know what I'm saying? But I, whatever. Nixon bonds there feel a lot more personal. I don't think it was a mm -hmm. good idea to replace Martian Manhunter with Cyborg as one of the seven founding members of the Justice League in the I New agree. 52. You could say, well, it's because the Justice League lacked black characters, so it was only fitting to put him on the team. So you mean to tell me there were no other alternatives or characters that would have been better picks considering the other potential options have been a part of some variation of the Justice League? That Vixen, part. Mr. Terrific, that and Black part. Lightning were right there, dog. And I don't know who was- Like, quit playing with him. <laughs> looking with his design in the Justice League movie, an actual abomination. Ah, good God, it's hideous, but beautiful in an ugly way. Problem area is up here. All of this going on up here is what's causing me the most physical discomfort. As I mentioned earlier, an unfortunate part in the implementation of Cyborg's character in the DCEU is the controversy surrounding Ray Fisher and what happened with the Justice League reshoots. The actor basically went on Twitter to explain the onset treatment from Joss Whedon and the unprofessional behavior that was going on. From the different things we've heard, not just from Ray Fisher, but other. Yeah, man, ain't, ain't no wonder that shit fell in the fucking toilet. Their sources as well. The Justice League reshoots were just a complete disaster, all the way from Henry Cavill's CGI mustache to actors not wanting to film uncomfortable scenes. Given Whedon's track record, none of this is surprising, and cutting out so many of Cyborg's scenes was a damn shame. Literally an entire character arc taken out of the film, but nah, we gotta have more jokes in there. Bro was the heart of the whole film in Zach. Because they were trying. Listen, I say this time, blue in the face, bruh. When DC started making their movies, they was in a dead ass haul to catch up to Marvel. They skipped things, uh, was bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It was a half ass job because Marvel had been doing this shit for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Before DC got on the reins, man, they went to Justice League 
quick as hell. Marvel, you got each character having a movie development. You got to grow attached to the characters solo before they merged together. And DC just wanted to catch up. They just wanted to get where Marvel was at. And so they did a couple, this movie, that movie, you know what I'm saying? And then Justice League. And then she just started going downhill from there. You know what I'm saying? They saw Marvel start to head toward the multiversal shit. DC wanted to head toward the multiversal shit. You know what I'm saying? And But the problem, it was so damn obvious that you're on the coattails of Marvel that it kind of diminished what you were doing. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that you were trying to do it so close behind them, but you were doing it so much worse. It, j it, j it didn't help. It didn't, it didn't help. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm figuring out all this shit. You know what I'm saying? They was, it was just a setup to just fucking fail, bro. Character arc taken out of the film, but nah, we gotta have more jokes in there. Bro was the heart oh, of yeah, the whole film. Oh yeah, I was gonna say more jokes, because you know how Marvel, Marvel do good with the jokes. They, 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 they took it, they took it far with Thor, Love and Thunder. They, they did. I feel like it, that movie was on the verge of becoming a parody of itself, but like they were able to hold on to me, they were able to hold on to me. But they, I feel like that was the furthest they have ever gone with the jokes, and I feel like they should not go any further than that. <laughs> Let's go. It's Justice League. Man, I'd be heated too. One thing I will say, though, is that I feel it isn't really productive for Ray Fisher to still post tweets to this day talking about some accountability over entertainment years after the Snyder Cut released. It's kind of beating a dead horse at this point, considering all of the WB executives like Walter Hamada, who took part in DC Films during that time, aren't even at the company anymore, so I'm not no sure who he still wants an apology from. It's become excessive at this point. Like, let it go, brother. It's over. I remember some years <laughs> back where WB had this weird obsession in trying to greenlight a black superman movie over a man of steel 2 oh god yo yeah here's the thing there are a lot of things where i feel like if they introduce the hero as black or whatever whatever so you know what i mean and then there are other times where you can just tell clearly that they are trying way too goddamn hard you know what i mean and we're like yo like we see what you're trying to do but you moving weird. Just bring out a, a black hero. Niggas that already exist. Why you got to make this nigga black? You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of black people that you could put on the screen to piss off the racist motherfuckers. There's a bunch of them, bro. <clears throat> but you doing this, you pissing off the racists and the people that actually want some authenticity. So, like, you fucking up everywhere. <laughs> or any continuation of their main Superman Henry Cavill, Talanisi Coase was set to write the script with J.J. Abrams set to produce the film. And I'm not gonna lie, I genuinely do not see the purpose of this movie. Oh now God. on one hand, it might have been cool to see an Elseworlds project on Val Zod, who is the Superman of Earth 2, or mm -hmm. Calvin Ellis, who is the President Superman from another Earth. But the thing is, is that Michael B. Jordan was set to produce a Val Zod Superman project, but it's different from the Black Superman movie that was supposed to be written by Talanisi Coates. And you guessed it, that movie went completely nowhere. Why am I not surprised? But if the intent for the J.J. Abrams movie okay, was to no, not- I remember I did see something about that. They were going to go on to an alternate version of the- Okay. Because when I first seen it, I thought they were just taking the Superman that we knew and making him black and doing that. I didn't. I hadn't known that they were going to do a different version, a different, like an, a variant of soups that is black. Um, but once again- it seems like the way it's being portrayed to me through what I'm hearing right now is every time that there is a black superhero movie trying to move its way through the WB pipeline, somebody shuts that shit down. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I would, I as much as I am enjoying the information that I receive, I am definitely one of those people that likes to, you know, do their own research. I know my man's showing me clips and, and, and things like that. And this is, I'm not going to lie, convincing. Um, but we got to, we got to, we got to look at some more of WB's history uh, outside of the hero stuff just to see where else they could have been moving weird. You know what I'm saying? Because this, this is, this, this, this definitely deserves lookings into. <laughs> Not even put the spotlight on Calvin Ellis or Val Zod and instead just have a black Clark Kent. Log off, bro. You're done. Yeah, Please that part. Wait, Calvin wait, Ellis or Val Zod. The J.J. Abrams movie was to not even put the spotlight on Calvin Ellis or Val Zod and instead just have a black Clark Kent. Yeah, that part. No, no, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Don't do that. Log off, bro. You're done. Please step out the office building.
To be so, honest, if they wanted a black Superman type of character so badly to star in a film, you could have just used Icon from Milestone. I mean, that. he's already similar to Superman, where he's an alien who crashed landed onto Earth, and his character part. was created way before the two alternate versions of Superman I just mentioned. There are countless okay. characters that deserve the spotlight in a plethora of DC projects, one of them being Mr. Terrific. Michael Holt is generally one of the top smartest characters in DC. He's often regarded as the third smartest person, but he could arguably be number one depending on who you ask. You're only the third on the smartest person list. I prefer not to draw too much attention to myself. Who do you think wrote that list? Uh, a very capable hand-to-hand -hand fighter, along with being more of a tech-based hero with his T-spears that can do, like, almost literally anything. Now, imagine my frustration with how he was depicted in the CW Arrowverse when he was a part of the core cast of Heroes in Arrow. They made up mm. sort of original character named Curtis, and he's kind of weird and over-the-top. He's like one of those geek stereotypes you'd see on TV, awkward and very clumsy at times. The character's comedic timing was off-putting and wasn't that capable of a fighter. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Um, Arrow was my introduction to that character and then when i started uh because like i said i was like i'm not a crazy uh comic fan like that i don't have the posters and all this other shit, you know what i'm saying i take it as i as i see it and if i see a character that does interest me then i'll do a little deeper dive on him um but that yeah that was my introduction and to to that since then i have seen different iterations of the character and for what he's saying, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't, they they kind of, they kind of, you know, I, I don't know, I don't quite know his comic book origin story if maybe he had been awkward like that at one time. But um, as far as, man, speaking on the representation that he had in that one, like, hey, hey, if it is, it is, hey, you gotta, you gotta talk about those. Very gotta talk about those. Times. The character's comedic timing was off-putting and wasn't that capable of a fighter. I appreciate his costume being straight out of the comics, but mm -hmm. that's the only thing they even remotely got right about his character. He was never a unique asset to the team when it came to his expertise in the tech field. His skill set was pretty much like a neutered Felicity Smoke, which is such mm -hmm. a disservice to his comic counterpart. I mean, there really Damn. is only one way to describe Mr. Terrific's character in the Arrowverse. Soft, overrated, <laughs> pretty boy, ah! a bitch. Damn. On Tell the bright side, really Mr. Feel. Terrific is one of the characters set to appear in James Gunn's Superman movie, in which okay. Gunn stated he's one of the characters he's excited for audiences to see on the big screen. The actor okay. for Mr. Terrific, Eddie Gathegi, been putting in that work, so hey, I hope they okay. cook with him in the okay. movie. Vixen Hopefully he do better than uh, they had him in uh, uh, X-Men First Class, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He was he, he was he very 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 short lived uh, appearance there. Let's go. Then is another character I think deserves more love oh, with hell a yeah. pretty cool and unique skill set uh -huh. where she dons the a totem that grants shit. her the abilities of any creature from the animal kingdom. She played a minor role in Justice League Unlimited as a love interest to Jon Stewart. She was also a part of the Arrowverse as a member of the Legends of Tomorrow cast. She even had her own webtoon animated series that was a tie-in to those CW Arrowverse shows. I haven't really seen her in much since I then. Seen that. Slight yeah, yeah. cameo roles in the Tomorrowverse animated movies, but nothing substantial. Sadly anything related to a Green Lantern in outside media has gotten the short end of the stick as the WB executives have had no desire in utilizing the character after the 2011 Ryan Reynolds movie. Jon Stewart had a pretty solid adaptation in just because they need to... Listen, WB got DC PTSD. <laughs> you know they do, bro, because they just keep fucking up when it comes to trying to make some DC shit. League and Justice League Unlimited. I mean, you got an entire generation of fans who grew up with him as Green Lantern. That there have been part. opportunities for the character to be explored in Green Lantern projects, like the Green Lantern DCEU movie that never happened, or that Green Lantern TV show that was in development by Greg Berlanti set to air on HBO Max that mm, also like never is, that, ended that's up That's what happening. I was watching. This right here, this is what I was watching for real, bro. I think that show was supposed to center on Guy Gardner and Alan Scott for whatever reason, but luckily that show was scrapped in favor of the Lanterns TV series in James Gunn's DCU, in which Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart will be the center focus Lanterns. Finally, some good fucking food. Look, all I'm trying to get at is that these companies rally for what they- But hey, hold on now, you said, you said, they said they were gonna do it, we were, where, where are we at on traction? <laughs> <laughs> think people want in terms of diversity for like brownie points and representation but mm. when it comes to actual well fleshed out and developed characters to become prominent in these major stories it's freaking crickets out here they're more interested in using their most popular characters to be like hey we have a black guy on the team hey you, you like batman right well here you go and with that mentality yeah, becoming that. so prominent fuck it's kind that. of a disservice Just to the well established what, black characters there. out there who more than deserve or fuck it man you could create more like <laughs> whatever they still making shit, you know what I mean? Comics still coming out, make another one, shit. <laughs>
from the spotlight. With the way WB works and their stupidity on almost every level, I couldn't care less about that black Superman movie. Give me my static shot movie. You that could part, ask almost anyone, and I'm pretty sure they would prefer a static film yes. for a black Superman. Yes. You know, I'm just saying, use yes. any of the milestone characters Facts. for crying out Facts. Yo, hey, this was facts. Let me listen to them facts over here. Yo, hold on. We might have to be over here some more. You know what I'm saying? Come come over here to get some some more facts. You know what I mean? Because I've seen... Ah, oh God. The, 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 I've seen some other stuff when people are like, Oh, they're woke this. They're woke that. Like, And I've seen uh, stuff about what people... People trying to make it seem like the Deadpool Wolverine movie is getting hate for being like misogynistic or whatever no it's not no it's not not from anybody who fucking matters you know what i'm saying that movie is the highest grossing domestic rated r film in this country like it is the, the 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 people have let it be known they don't give a fuck about none of what any of that the shit they talk about that movie was great you know what i'm saying now i don't i feel like dc I feel like WB needs to sell DC, bro. They need to they need to they need to give that shit to Disney. I'm sorry. They need to give that shit to Disney. Like let Disney do it. Because oh my god. The fact it would just be awesome to get a DC Marvel crossover like in some comics, but we can't we can't do that with WB, but WB stuck on stupid when it comes to this shit. I swear to god. Like and I was enjoying the DCEU stuff. I really was. Um, I know The Flash was getting a lot of hate for the CGI stuff. Uh, it didn't bother me too much. It, it was it was just the, the, the way that they was fucking up. They continuities. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just could not get over how they kept trying to catch up to Marvel. I was like, bro, take your time and make your shit. I swear to God. And now we got all of the... Now, like I said, I ain't no none of this stuff now this is all new information i gotta go look at but god damn bro these motherfuckers are tripping that's the take you should have liked be sure to subscribe follow me on all that there's social media and i'll catch y'all next time peace, 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 peace.